So what we're doing today is deer and elk herd composition counts is what we call. We're doing it from a helicopter. Uh, this particular day we're in the Metolius unit and then we'll, we'll do similar type counts in all the units here and throughout Central Oregon. And, you know, we, we do have to r run the deer and some people have concerns about that. It's a very, very brief time period that we're over a group of deer and it's a one-time deal. Once we count them, we're gone, they're done, and they're, they're behind us and we don't disturb them again. Most groups of deer, you know, will run to the nearest patch of junipers and the nearest patch of cover and stand there. We don't feel it's a detriment to the animals and it's data that we need, both biologically and, and legally, that we need to collect. Prior to the winter, we also were able to get a buck ratio. So we assume that bucks die uh, throughout the winter in the same proportions that does, does do. Fawns are a different matter, so our fawns typically decline throughout the winter, so our fawn ratio will drop. That data, uh, we keep track of it in two places. We keep it on a backup paper copy, and we keep it on a, a tablet. And all, all, that's all, basically all we're keeping is we're plotting those points on the map and recording the data in, in terms of the classification. For elk, we're measuring bulls, cows, and calves. So we'll, we'll get a, a bull ratio, bulls per 100 cows, and a calf ratio, calves per 100 cows. And this, this is what's recruited into the population. Um, we consider them recruited about this time of year around that sample mean population estimate. Uh, the elk densities here are not high enough and there's too much variability with where they're located from year to year to get a good population estimate for our elk uh, yet. Um, they, they are increasing slowly in number, and if they continue to increase at, at some point in the future, we will be able to, to, to develop a good population estimate for elk also.